Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on another wonderful, bright, sunny Monday morning after a fabulous, fabulous Arsenal win. I hope you've all calmed down a little bit after the drama of yesterday at the Emirates. I woke up feeling totally and utterly physically and emotionally drained after that. It was like I'd been playing. Uh, what a game, what a win, what an atmosphere, just such a special day if you were one of the lucky enough, one of the lucky 60,000 people like me to be in the ground yesterday. Really was a special, special afternoon and another fine win from Arsenal. Five points clear again at the top of the Premier League with a game in hand at the halfway stage. 50 points from 19 games, never been done before by an Arsenal team in the club's history. Five points better off than the Invincibles were at this stage of their season. I mean, it's difficult to put into words, really, just how big an achievement that is from a team who are rebuilding, who are young. I mean, it's it's tough to put enough credit on the on what Arsenal are doing this season so far. Impressive stuff and really, really a joy to watch. And, you know, every single game at the moment feels like a huge one. Every single obstacle that's been put in front of them, they seem to be hurdling and they just deserve an awful lot of credit and it, it was the atmosphere in there yesterday it was so so special it really was and the unity that exists between the club between the players between the fans it's 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 like you know I've looked I've been going to Arsenal for 30 30 years now I've been a season ticket holder since 1990 and I've you know I've seen some great amazing things at Highbury you know the George Graham years the Arsene Wenger years the Invincibles I was there for it all and and they were amazing but just the connection between the fan base and this team this season is something I've not really experienced before even with those great sides it's all, it's just the way the fans are urging them on or you know, getting behind them when they can see the goal like again yesterday when Rashford scored or when Martinez equalised it's like the fans know that they've got a huge, huge part to play because this team is so young, because they've never been there before. Maybe that's the difference between now and the Invincibles is that the fans at Highbury back then and you know, when I was there, it was because you knew how amazing the players were, how world-class the players were, how experienced they were. You always kind of felt they'd be able to do it themselves. But with this team, because they're so young and so many of them have just never been in a situation like this before, the fans know that they've got such a huge part to play and you can really feel that around the ground whenever you're at the games now and I could feel it yesterday you really really could and the noise around the place was something to behold and the celebrations after Nketiah's goal were just fantastic to be involved it was I think the, the VAR situation literally it added to the drama so much because you had the initial celebration then you had the VAR then you had just the absolute intense nervousness that was around the stadium waiting for the decision to be made and then the roar that greeted the when it flashed up on the board that the goal was given, it was louder than the goal itself. It really was a very bizarre moment almost. And uh, you could celebrate it twice. And uh, it was just, just brilliant. I mean, Mikel was speaking afterwards in a press conference. You could see how happy he was, how proud he was. He knew what a big win that was. Not just a win, but the manner of it, what that would do for the belief. And, you know, Bukai Saka was talking about it afterwards as well in terms of, you know, exactly how, what winning a game like that can do in terms of belief and in terms of the rest of the season. It was, it was really, really important. And, um, Mikel said afterwards, look, I don't know if I've ever heard an atmosphere like that, but it doesn't get much better. It was a beautiful moment, a really special one, because we were pushing and pushing and the goal wasn't coming, but it came at the end and VAR made it even more difficult, but it was just electric. It was really emotional, really passionate, and I loved it. It's just moments like that yesterday, games like that yesterday, and United played their part because I thought United were good even though Arsenal absolutely dominated. And when you look at the stats, it was incredibly one-sided. Although when you're watching the match, it didn't really feel like that. Um, but it was, a, it was a really good game, really special. And, you know, when you're, when you're there for moments like that, you just realise why you love football so much. You know, all the pain, all the misery that you go through on bad seasons and bad results and bad performances, it just gets put to one side when you experience a, a win like that and a manner of it and a, a team that you can really get behind and that's what Arsenal are doing right now and you know it's just, it's just a, it's fantastic to watch I've seen all your comments you've all been sort of flooding in underneath the player ratings video I did yesterday and on my Twitter as well Facebook to see how how much you're enjoy, all enjoying it as well and you know it's a special time to be an Arsenal fan but we have to admit 
look, it's only halfway through the season. There's still 19 games left of this season. Incredible amount of time left to go. It feels like it should be so much further because we're towards the end of January. You almost feel like there should only be about 15 games to go now, 14 games to go, but it's not. There's still 19 games to go. And there's that very big Erling haaland size problem right on just sitting on the horizon that Arsenal just can't quite shake off and he did his business again yesterday scoring yet another hat-trick four for the season 25 Premier League goals Man City cruising to the win and that's the standard that Arsenal are going to have to continue to set because if they drop off just a little bit then you know exactly what's coming and that's Manchester City and Erling Haaland but from one striker in Erling Haaland to another in Eddie Nketiah what a game what a moment Biggest of his career, no doubt. I think Chelsea last season was big. The fact he went back to Stamford Bridge, the club would released him, obviously, and he scored twice for Arsenal. You know, it was a big, big moment for Nketiah. But yesterday, to score twice at home against United in a game of that magnitude, to score a last-minute winner, to send Arsenal five points clear, it's the biggest moment of his career, hands down. And he deserves so, so much credit for what he's doing, Eddie Nketiah. He's Arsenal's top scorer now this season. I think he's got six and six since... Um, uh, he came into the side following Gabriel Jesus' injury. There was so much talk about, you know, will Arsenal be able to cope without Jesus? Will Nketiah be able to step up? And look what he's doing. He deserves so much credit. He got so much stupid abuse or criticism, if that's be the better word, um, from fans, Arsenal fans as well, saying, oh, he's not good enough. We need better than Eddie Nketiah. It's like, I'll oh, just give him a chance. He, he showed at the end of last season what he can do when he needs to line. And look what he's doing now. He's scoring goals. But it's not just about the goals. It's the performance yesterday from him, the running, the work ethic, the pressing, everything about it. He's just improved so much in the space of the last year. Just a completely different striker where he was just that sort of penalty box poacher, which he still is, but he's developed so much more than that around his game. And he's really showing that in this run now. And he deserves a huge amount of credit for it. It was a really good moment yesterday when Gabriel Jesus was on the touchline at full time and he was waiting for Inketia to come off. And he gave, just gave him a big, big hug. And you could see how happy Inketia was, how big a moment it was. And just to have someone like Jesus, you know, the player who was ahead of him in the side, waiting for him to congratulate him on the touchline was a big, big moment for him. And he deserves so much credit. And Mikel speaking afterwards says, what Eddie is doing is incredible. We can uh, we cannot say that we saw it for definite, but we were hoping that he would be able to do it because of the way he is, because of his mentality, because of his qualities and how those qualities fit within the team. The qualities he has, how much he wants it, how much belief he's got in himself to become Arsenal's number nine, his desire, his background. We're with him every single day. He's a special, special kid. He's so loved by everyone. He's got a real Arsenal heart and experience with him. And that's very special. You cannot put that into numbers. He's really, really good. So lovely words there from Mikel Arteta. And you know, this is an academy boy. This is an Arsenal boy doing the business in a title, in a title race, wearing obviously a huge iconic number 14 shirt. And he's doing the business. He's scoring the goals. You look at Arsenal's front line yesterday. Eddie Nketiah, academy player. Bukaya Saka, academy player. Gabriel Martinelli, £6 million. That's the job. That's what Mikel Arteta is doing with these players. You know, £6 million attack. And Arsenal are top five points clear with a possibility of going eight points clear with that game in hand. That's just an absolutely incredible achievement in the modern day football with all the finances involved, with the mega rich clubs, with unlimited funds going up against them and yet Arsenal were doing it with this big big project with these sort of players leading the line who just bleed Arsenal as well you know Saka, Smith Rowe and Ketia. it's just a fantastic thing and you saw Reese Nelson was on the touchline again yesterday as well he's obviously injured at the moment but it just makes it even more special I think that you've got players like that who are coming through and really inspiring this title charge at the moment of course, Arsenal did spend money in the summer as well. And one of the players they did spend money on was Alexander Zinchenko. And I did speak about him in my ratings video yesterday. I haven't watched it yet. Can give it a watch after that. It was unreal yesterday, Zinchenko. Yeah, one of the the top performances I've seen of any player this season. He was incredible. And he was at Tottenham as well a week earlier. What a signing he has been for Arsenal. It's just obviously a shame he missed a lot of the season, first half of the season to, for injury. But now he's fit and you see him, what he can do and what he brings to this team. You know, and that is a real quality piece of transfer business from Arsenal. I don't know why Manchester City let him go, I have no idea. But um, Arsenal's gain is certainly their loss. And it'll be interesting to see if Zinchenko plays against City on Friday in the, in the FA Cup game. But I thought it was brilliant yesterday, Zinchenko. What a performance. There are other good performances as well. I saw. I think Saka got man of the match on Sky. And he did play very well. We gave Luke Shaw a torrid time. And Ketia obviously scoring twice. But 
yeah, Zinchenko for me, I thought he was a standout player on that pitch. And it was such a high quality game between two really good teams. There were some good performances on the United side as well. But I thought Zinchenko just stole the show for me and the passion he showed. So he was the guy leading the team talk before the game. He saw his, his the way he celebrated at full time. He celebrated the winning goal, which he obviously put the cross in that led to it. And um, he's just such a leader. Brilliant piece of transfer business from Arsenal. And that's why when you can sort of mould those sort of players, those big money signings around the young players that they've got who are coming through the academy and not spend too much money on, that's just a fantastic ingredient. And, uh, and it's really paying off for Arsenal at the moment. Okay, so away from the game yesterday, a bit of transfer business obviously still to be conducted by Arsenal. Jakub uh, Kivior was in the director's box yesterday. The cameras kept picking up on him watching the match. Big pat on the back from Edu at one point. Uh, he arrived on Friday, uh, sorry, on Saturday, spent the day at London Colney doing all the necessary stuff, met his new teammates, finalising his move. That will be confirmed at some point. I can't say when because he's Arsenal. You never know. It changes all the time. But, you know, that's a deal that is going to be done very, very, or sort of confirmed very, very quickly. Um, and... Um, he, even though he was in the director's box yesterday and he was shown on TV, Arteta still wouldn't talk about him after the game and the press conference just said we have to wait until it's finalised to talk about it, uh, which made me laugh a little bit. Can't even talk about it when the whole world has seen him at Arsenal. But yeah, that'll be confirmed soon. And then we'll wait and see what happens with Ivan Frisnada, the uh, Valladolid right back who Arsenal are in talks over at the moment. Not the only club in for him. Uh, his agent was at London Colney last week talk and spent time at other clubs as well discussing a move. We're coming down towards the sort of key moments when it comes to him and where he's going to go for the long term. Arsenal very much in the running. I think there are other clubs as well, potentially Borussia Dortmund. I think David Ornstein or The Athletic, I saw a report that, they, that um, uh, Dortmund are also in the running with Arsenal to get him. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I think this is going to be a crucial week when it comes to that. A big decision is going to have to be made by him and his representatives in terms of where he is going to go. Valadolid happy to let him leave. I think uh, a fee, uh, by the sounds of it, has already been agreed with not just Arsenal, but other clubs as well. And it's basically down to him to make a decision. I think whatever happens to him, though, it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be one for this season. I think he'll head back and spend the rest of the season on loan in Spain um, you know Arsenal don't really need him at the moment Ben White although he struggled yesterday has been brilliant at right back this season you've got Tommy Asu as well of course Cedric Suarez is still at the club and we're still not sure yet exactly what he he's going to decide this month in terms of his future whether he's going to go and push for a move to Fulham or he's going to stay and be part of the squad until the end of the season and then leave in the summer he's got a decision to make on that um, so we'll wait and see exactly what happens with Fresnada but uh, yeah I think certainly in the next few days this week as it progresses we'll, uh, we should come to a decision in terms of where his next club is going to be and whether it will be Arsenal or not all right, that, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate your time and your support as always. Please do enjoy the rest of your Monday. Go in and watch the highlights again if you haven't watched them too many times already this morning. Or in fact, you can't watch them too many times, can you? Turn it up. Listen to that roar at the end when the goals goes in. Arsenal are five points clear at the top of the Premier League. 50 points from 19 games. What a season it's been so far. Have a great day.